I really love this game because of its realism and what ants might experience in the wild. I can't wait to see how the game creatively poses a threat to my ants in Tier 3. Hmm. Things seem a little too easy for our erectors. Perhaps I should level the playing field. <laughs> ha! <laughs> this is going to be harder than I thought. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm back and it's time to march through the rainforest on my conquest to do complete Empires of the Undergrowth completely deathless. This is the third video of a series, the first two episodes may be necessary for context. The rules of the run are simple, if an ant is killed I must reset or reload, deleting a level 1 brute tile counts as an ant being killed. The run is completed on easy difficulty as there is no way this is even vaguely possible on anything higher. How will I manage to maneuver around agile predators and enemy colonies without losing a single ant? Let's find out in the harvest. Enjoy the video. The harvest is the first level in tier 3, and the objective is to gather 10,000 leaf units before an opponent colony does the same. The threat is not the race of the leaves, as the opponent leaf cutter is atrociously slow and easy. I have to complete the level before too many large creatures begin to roam around, so I still have a timer. My first attempt went surprisingly far. I opted to create several majors to guard key points on the harvesting line to protect the workers. Unfortunately, towards the end, a young leaf mimic appeared out of its disguise and ended the life of a worker, making the first of many unfortunate attempts. Next, a lone trapjaw finds my harvesting line and kills off and I devise a plan to invade the enemy nest with these four champions. After some combat, they enter the nest and get to work killing. Or at least they should have. The opponent's level 3 majors are terrifyingly strong, and this won't really work deathless. Next, a major barely dies to a velvet worm. Just look how close this was. Unbelievable. The morning of day 2 can sometimes spawn a jumping spider from this little tunnel. It's very quick to run south and kill an ant. I even saw the spider, but it left me no time to react. It jumps down, kills a media, and goes on its way, ending my attempt. On this next attempt though, I used many more media than usual. As I was gathering, two green rove beetles are gunned for my harvesting lines, but I intercepted them with my majors. Then out of nowhere, a HUGE velvet worm ambushes and executes a few of my media, prompting a restart. All these crazy deaths could have been avoided, but I finally got a winning attempt. An early trapjaw spawn attacks a jumping spider and gets destroyed. I exterminate the jumping spider with my first major and clear out a small velvet worm to the east after a night fell. After stealthily collecting the west and positioning a major to kill the jumping spider on day two, the jumping spider never spawns. Great, glad to know that's random. I strip the middle of all the leaves and challenge the enemy colony with two of my level three hero majors. Then I set all three of my majors to guard key points on the harvesting lines. This felt really cool. I was acting like a real leaf cutter colony, all the workers in the media gathering leaves while majors just guarded the harvesting lines. The harvest definitely wasn't a crazy level deathless, but it felt really immersive and I loved it. After this I pulled all of my forces back to my nest to reduce the risk of mantis attacks. As soon as night fell I quickly jolted out of my nest and finished off the west of all its leaves, and the objective was completed before the opponent attack wave can even touch my nest. Not a terrible level, but deathless is always difficult nonetheless. Frontline, in theory, is an incredibly difficult level. Strong jungle creatures roam the very large map, and we must fight an objective very far from the nest. As for the objective, army ants. Army ants are no joke. They can power each other up and boost their damage by up to 9 times at level 1. Thankfully, when Empires of the Undergrowth speedrunning was in its infancy, Frontline was the first level to be completely optimized, bringing the time to 5.5 minutes. Any level that can be completed in five and a half minutes will not require much death. And we can take the basic ideas from the speedrun to complete the level deathless. As for the speedrun, it relies on collecting leaves to feed a small army. Occasionally, a small velvet worm spawns up north. Try and intercept it before it finds the workers. On my first attempt, I try a singular level 3 major, accompanied with some media. This turns out not to be enough, army ants are still strong even though this level is easy. A second try using more lower level majors secures the quick and easy frontline deathless. 
Now we have the finale of tier 3, where the game really starts to get cool. With the new Formicarium, we now have access to Leafcutter Majors and their amazing abilities. Unfortunately, I was forced to choose Rapid Fire as my wood end option, an option that would soon come back to bite me in the butt. Before anything, I pick up the Resistance Sora on my Leafcutter Majors to reduce incoming damage by 30% for all nearby ants. This damage reduction stacks wonderfully with my black ants for 80% reduced damage, oftentimes making the wimpy black ants possess more health than the mighty majors. Now, here's the reason why we needed all these preparations. The objective of Formicarium Challenge 3 is simply to defeat the enemy queen. The enemy queen has many high level ants, 2200 food stored for respawns, and the support of scientists too, in the form of spawning crickets in my nest, dropping mantis onto my soldiers, or straight up smiting my ants with his rubbery hand of god. If the scientist smites my ants, they will always die. So it seems I have two options. The first option, what I opt for, is to hold my army on my side of the arena and bait chunks of the enemy using my rapid fire, taking small fights to slowly drain the enemy's food. In theory this would work, but it's very time consuming and oftentimes one of my ants die in the heat regardless. Now for the next plan, running into the enemy nest. Normally this would strike an ant. normally the scientist would strike an ant with his finger before this works. But a one-time dialogue delays his hand, and he won't attack at all if I can get some ants into the enemy's nest. By running past the initial enemies with my attack turned off, I can converge and into the enemy nest, regroup, and push towards their queen. This constant assault leaves me with no losses and the enemy with heavy losses. All is well until the enemy army ant majors show up. They instantly buff all of their allies for massive amounts of damage, quickly shredding through my black ants. This is where I wish I this is where I wish I'd have chosen mortar, as the splash damage would make this a breeze. But I need rapid fire for the future. I keep trying again and again. No difference. Sometimes a black ant simply runs forward to die, but mostly my ants just can't take the heat of the army ants. Something will always be killed, making the strategy not suitable for Deathless. The only thing I could think of was returning to the original strategy of baiting the enemy ants. But this time I would fight within the tunnel in the middle. This would normally be an issue due to the crickets and mantis the scientist spawns, but it turns out these spawns are heavily reduced on low difficulties. Only three crickets or a single young mantis. A young mantis can't even kill a wood ant in one strike, so it's completely negated as a threat. The crickets can be an issue, but leaving seven majors by the queen is an effective way to keep her protected, and I use the seven workers to bait the army over and over. This strategy is so much more time efficient and more effective overall. Many losses still occur though, until this one attempt. I can continually fight the army until they run out of food. I can detect I can detect this by looking into their nest using free camera and spotting their fat eggs, which are eggs ready to hatch but without food to do so. Once the enemy ant count drops though, their army will only follow my bait so far. Eventually they have only a handful of ants still left. I cannot fight I cannot fight in their side of the formicarium due to the scientist's hand. My ants get dangerously close to the hand aggro my my ants get dangerously close to the hand aggro range, and I manage to kill all but three of the enemy ants. This is enough. I pull everything back to the nest and send out the seven majors that were acting as queen guards. They approach the three enemy ants, finish them off, but the scientist hand prepares to strike. My seven heroic majors run into the enemy queen's nest and barely escape his strikes. The majors are left to clean up just the queen's workers and finish her off, completing tier three without losing a single ant. This was a lot of fun to complete, but the worst of Deathless is yet to come. After the rainforest, we have the swamp, a damp grove full of large, cold-blooded amphibians that can devour ants instantly. Although we have access to the mighty fire ant, the massive threats the swamp has in store will almost guarantee ant death. The scientists' plans are menacing, but nothing stands up to the terrifying titan that rules the swamp. Tier 4 Deathless, the finale, will be insane. Thank you for watching, stay tuned for part 4. Hey, just before the video ends, I wanted to say that these videos take 6 or more hours to edit each, and many more hours to attempt the challenges and think up of the challenges in these videos. I put a lot of effort into them, and I would really appreciate if you could subscribe. It means the world to me, and I'm finally back after a big break. Expect some more videos soon, I'm not done with Deathless. Thank you.